I'm excited to bring these next seven gentlemen out. It's our largest panel to date. Um, and we've got a bunch of awesome, crazy characters uh, and also human beings that are waiting just behind the scenes right now uh, to come on out here and show you their outlandish love. Um, so let's start things off. Uh, you know him from the Dark Knight trilogy, uh, but we know him as Ulysses. Let's hear it for Colin McFarlane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Carlin, what's up? How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Very surreal, but great to be here. Super surreal, but uh, super happy to have you here. All right, next up, you know him from Outlaw King, and we love him as Murtaugh Frazier. Oh, man, he's been it here from the beginning. Let's hear it for Duncan LaCroix. Thanks. Thanks, you kind. <laughs> nice. You know, I, I appreciate the, the look up to the people sitting in the balcony, Duncan. That's nice. <laughs> No Thank problem. you for being here, Duncan. All right, next up from Downton Abbey, uh, but we know and love him as Stephen, or maybe we hate him a little bit, uh, as mm -hmm. Stephen Bonnet. Let's hear it for Ed Spilliers. So I can't quite see you all out there. How are you all doing? Yeah? We're doing, How's everyone, you, up in the, everyone all right up in the cheap seats? Up in the cheap seats are good. I'll tell you what yeah. they're doing. I see there's a lot of fire emojis, heart Very emojis. Good. Wounds, uh, Ed's with like six exclama exclamation points. So <laughs> they're showing their love out there. Thanks for joining us, Ed. All right, next up from the Hobbit trilogy, also young Ian Fraser Murray. Let's hear it for John Bell. Right. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> what's up? What's up? <laughs> Thank you for joining us, John. Uh, next up, you know him from the comedy series of Burnestown, uh, but we know him as Roger Wakefield. Let's give it up for Richard Rankin. <laughs> nice. Where is he? Oh, Richard, 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 you're on. You're on, you're on. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Over there? Yeah. What? Hey. Welcome. Oh, joining us. Uh, I look yeah. virtual background D from the stage. Very nice. This isn't virtual. Oh, that's my mate. He's just having a wee sleep there. No, I meant the seagull. It's been a long day. Oh, the seagull, yeah. <laughs> you know, social distancing. We're all two meters apart, as you can see. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a death perception thing. You're much cl just closer to us. They're way far behind you. Yeah, yeah, right. they're far behind and really big, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's bring our next two uh, gentlemen out. Um, you, know, you know him from Upstart Crow. Uh, he is the e uh, very evil Governor Tryon. Let's hear it for Tim Downey. What is it? It's just all over the floor. It's all over the floor. What is it? Really? You're going to have to... Oh, hi! Hey. Hi! <laughs> You all have Sorry. done before. You Thanks very done much. Done Don't get up. Don't get up. <laughs> this is amazing. This is just like a Saturday Night Live live, I feel like. We're, we're just as uh, <laughs> entertaining right now. It's all happening. It's all kicking off. It's like, it's like a game of celebrity squares. Yeah, no, this, this should be the norm of panels now forever more, forever. This is how we should do a panel. I haven't even keep doing it like this, Richard. We're going to keep doing it like this. Even when conventions come back, we're going to keep these going because people that wouldn't normally be able to make it to the conventions, depending on what city you're in, are experiencing this live. So we love it, as long as you guys love it. <laughs> All right, let's not make him wait any longer. Um, you know him from the film Pride. Uh, he is John Quincy Myers. Let's hear it for Kyle Reese. <laughs> Wheels! Press the button. <laughs> Press the button, Reese. <laughs> Keep your finger on the button. Yeah. Keep your finger on, on the button. Wheels, where are you? <laughs> yeah. I've oh, never dear. seen that background before. So many Welsh jokes could play that. Where are you? I think he's playing us. I think he's playing us. I think that's just an image of a no camera. That's not the official Zoom image. Kyle, you're there, aren't you? Don't, don't mess around with us. got a big card with it on. It's just holding a card. He's going, hey. Card up. Stage fright. <laughs> Kyle, can you hear us? Are you not really there? Is that a dramatic entrance? Because oh, we are come on, you're milking it now, man. Come on, Wales. <laughs> He's milking it. He's milking it. He's there somewhere. He's Everyone's there. saying, someone help Kyle. Someone save Kyle. Or Where not. Kyle? Or should we give him a call? <laughs> we can give him a call. Uh, Akinola uh, from Greenlit Gaming is watching uh, in the background. Uh, also, Wizard World is watching as well. This is the fun of this live panel. That, oh, he's gone. All right. Go. Oh! <laughs> There's no reception down there, boy. Oh! <laughs> he got so excited. Before we uh, came out here, I know we were. he was bragging about his whole setup for his podcast and how he had all this really nice equipment and everything. He had the cool yes. backdrop with I the dragon. The and passed what? by his window, so... What's that? I think a sheep just passed by his window, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> everyone's just kind of everyone's just saying the the, yeah, the the Wi-Fi in Wales is not as good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Akinola. All right, well, let's uh, let's get started. Um, thank you for uh, joining us. We've got a great represent a representation of the uh, United Kingdom right now. I feel like we're representing all the uh, um, different different sections, different parts. Um, it's amazing to have you here. Um, first off, I'd like to start off and just say congratulations, y'all. Uh, we've got the uh, season finale coming up on May, what is it, May 20th, right? Uh, May 10th, sorry. Season finale, May 10th on Stars. Um, what an amazing series. Um, you've all brought such amazing things to your characters as of late. So again, speaking for all the fans, thank you so much for a great season. Um, and uh, we're super excited to see how things play out in the finale and then how things move on with your announced sixth season. Obviously, we know that there's um, some spoilers and some uh, untimely demises for potentially some folks in this group, but that doesn't make uh, it uh, any less uh, the, of our love, and we appreciate you all uh, being here. So we'll we'll avoid some of those. We know you're uh, the Outlandish fans are super savvy. All the Sassanax out there, all the Sassanax groups, um, they they meticulously studied the books and the films. Um, and the films, my gosh, uh, and the TV show, but we are happy to have you here. I want to get things kicked off um, with a fan question. Um, we see you're all uh, here in your various locations. Uh, this comes from Janet Merrill um, and Tammy Monroe. Just what are some things that you've been doing um, to kind of stay sane during your isolation? Also, any new talents, any new talents that you've picked up or new hobbies? Um, love to hear a little bit from each one of you. Who wants to kick off? <laughs> I've just got um, a bit of a five minutes on Duolingo trying to learn Russian, and uh, that was about it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the extent of it. The rest of the time, just been sleeping. You really try to learn Russian during the time? Yeah. Five yeah. minutes. Also, I'm staking out my neighbor because they've been fly dumping. So if you see oh. me rush off with a <laughs> baseball bat, that'll be. Uh, <laughs> oh. Writing is what I'm currently doing. What are you writing? What? I'm writing a, a true story um, about, a, about a singer cabaret artist from the 1920s, 30s, 40s. Um, so, well, we sent it out just before lockdown. And we just had some feedback from the Beeb. So I'm redrafting that, which is a really good way of using up a lot of time because it takes forever. Uh, and I've just started doing daily workouts, uh, which I've never done in my life, to some random person on YouTube who's very good, doing a seven minute workout, which I just finished today, that the third time. So that is kind of, for me, pretty out there. I don't know when we do that sort of thing. Um, so it, rediscovering my music is probably the biggest passion I've had. Um, don't know we have a lot of time to do that, but that's been fun. And so I'm currently working on a dance routine, which I may share with you in a few weeks. Oh, oh yeah. that is awesome. You know, a little bit of Michael Jackson for y'all, you know? <laughs> and this is like a workout that people can watch and like do dance along with you, kind of, kind of. Get uh, possibly. <laughs> We're working on it. We're just doing a little bit every day. You know, we'll see where it goes. We should Colin McFarlane's fitness instruction video. I think this nah, could be a thing. Now, <laughs> John is my manager, by the way. <laughs> I've been trying to do practical things. So today I tried to uh, make my daughter's bed, as in physically make it, as in get the screws and screw it all together. Uh, got halfway through, went, oh my God, I've done, I've done it wrong. I've screwed the thing on upside down. I've, I've wrecked it. So then it took me another half an hour to take off the tiny little screws that aren't very, to take it all together, put it all back, put it together. Went, I was right the first time. <laughs> but now I have to put the whole thing. It took an hour and a half, an hour and a half, and the drawer now still still doesn't work. She loves it, and I'm not about to be the one to say it's wrong. I've ruined I've ruined your bed. It will probably last a week tops. But for now, enjoy it. So that's been my stint of trying to be manly and do a bit of a bit of DIY. Failed miserably. That's that's been my my uh, my toe dipped and very quickly re, uh, retracted. Tim, you've been doing, Tim has been reading those beautiful bedtime stories. Yes. I mean, are, you, are you doing those one a day, Tim, or? We do, yeah, I do about 15 minutes, about sort of 10, 15 minutes of an evening, around about sort of eight o'clock in, you know, BST, British summertime. Uh, and I've been doing it now, I think I worked out, this is now the sixth week. Wow. That I have, uh, that I've been doing it. But it's great fun. It's really great fun. Just kind of sit and read. It's just such a kind of, sort of innocence to it. It's just the simplicity of a kid's story is just purely about just entertain 
and to kind of amuse and hopefully you know just sort of takes people away from the sort of horrors of the day of just kind of going yeah i want to hear what the cat in the hat has to do i want to see if he uh if he really kind of gets that room tidy you know yeah. all of these things that's you awesome. Know, and I'm gonna come to tea. Yes, he is. <laughs> and I know the parents out there appreciate it. Uh, with kids uh, uh, homeschooling right now, um, we, I, they, I, I'm sure the parents out there are, are loving it. So we really appreciate you doing that. And for all to all of you again today for doing this, this is also giving people a nice little break uh, from everything that's going on. So, so thank you, thank you once again. Um, all right, Richard, John, Ed, uh, who's next? What have you been doing to sort of pass the time? Um, well, I've been um, I've been getting ready to move actually. So I'm I'm doing a big move from from Barcelona to Madrid. So I'm going proper to Castizo, España. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been learning a bit of Spanish and yeah, watching a lot of Spanish movies, including Colin McFarlane in Legado de los Huesos. No, you saw it. I did see it. Uh -huh. That is surreal. <laughs> So that's yeah, that's been yeah, that's been my my time spent so far, and just uh, yeah, film that in Madrid. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Good, yeah, great books. I haven't seen the film yet, obviously, but um, yeah, I'm glad someone's seen it. Good. Yeah, it's like on Netflix, number one in Spain. Boom, we like that. <laughs> Uh, I've just been trying to keep a, a structured week, but kind of a Monday to Friday, kind of a work week, if you like. Um, chill out uh, on a Saturday, Sunday, you know, um, give myself the chance to, you know, to do some recreate. But I've been, I'll go back into painting these little guys. If you can see this. Yes. Blade mm -hmm. Marine from Warhammer. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Um, but during the week, I've been trying to uh, trying to stay productive. I've been uh, getting back into learning my French. I've been doing daily guitar exercises. I've been uh, what else? I've been doing doing a lot of sort of editing and stuff, uh, and just and trying to stay fit as well, trying to stay active. So doing a lot of uh, running, not as much as Ed Spillers, not not by a long shot, um, and uh, working out a couple of times a week. So kind of practical, just you know, stay, trying to stay sane basically. Nothing too exciting. Ed, there are actually a lot of folks are asking out there, Ed, uh, 100X Scorpio, um, Ulan Man, how many miles have you been running? Tell us about your running, Ed. Uh, so the reason why I'm probably slightly subdued at the moment is because I've actually just not long come back from a bit of a struggle of a run. I've been doing, yeah, I've been doing 10K every day uh, for the um, NHS charities. I've been inspired by lots of other people doing lots of wonderful things. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I mean, I, it's been, it's been, I've been saying for a while I wanted to get back into running, so this has been a great way to do it. And just trying to show a little bit of um, my city, well, my my adopted city of Bristol, um, <laughs> as I go along. And it's been, yeah, again, similar to, to Richard, you know, trying to, you know, it's, 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 I get a lot out of it because I'm getting a bit of structure. It gets me out of the house and two small children for for an hour, uh, <laughs> and then it gives me more energy to come back and be with those two small children for the rest of the day. So, uh, how, yeah, how small are your two small children? Uh, five and very nearly two. Oh wow! Well, then you've got to get them to watch Little Princess on Channel Five. Okay. Uh, do you have a girl? Are they both boys? One's a boy, one's a girl. Yeah, they're both. Perfect. But they'll both. Love, I mean, my, my son likes all all films. Great. All right, Little Princess, Milkshake, 8.40 a.m., Channel 5. Oh, happy days. Yeah, I do most of the voices. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm, plug, plug. Hey, I'm here to help the other five. You know? Now we've got the whole world tuning in. Like five, five, <laughs> mate, there's five different cartoons I'm in. So <laughs> starting you with that one. But you'll like that one. It sounded, it sounded like such a sincere, just like recommendation. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I know they'll love it. He'll thank me for it. No. I agree. Literally everyone in that cartoon. So what? <laughs> I am literally <laughs> Jane Horrocks and uh, somebody else. But, yeah. Brilliant. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, congrats. Um, no. uh, Kyle Reese is here, everybody. Kyle, we so gave you sorry. a great intro, but it was a long time ago, so we can't do it again. No, I'm kidding. Um, thank you for joining us, <laughs> Kyle. Kyle well, let's let's check in with you um, because you know this this actually plays in pretty well. We were just talking about what you've been doing to pass the time and everything. Um, I know. Uh, just just let us know a little bit about what you've been doing during the quarantine. Any any uh, hobbies or anything you picked up? Um. Well, yeah, I was a bit bored the first week, so I just threw myself into different things. I started a bake off. Uh, everyone got involved, um, all the cast, so that was quite good. 
Um, so I've done a bit of baking. Um, my there's never been a bigger mess in my kitchen, Kyle. And I'm never... <laughs> yeah, he started something. <laughs> it was good though. Everyone's cakes cakes are really great. Um, I was I was very impressed. Hey, Kyle, um, you never announced the winner of the Bake Off though. I didn't get a call. Oh, we were all we were all winners, John. We were all oh, oh, oh bullshit. Come on, come on. No. Come on all winners, bam. <laughs> um, if if any, I, I don't know. I think Caitlin's was pretty good. It was really neat, very very well thought. Um, and I like Paul Donnelly's as well because he did the whole stay at home heart NHS. There's no, like, we've no idea. There's no obviously. There's no taste. We know we don't have a clue how any of the taste. Probably tasted the best. I'm just saying, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I put like five hours into a full production, like short film creation for this cake. How am I not the winner? I, it's sure, unfair. Right. Yours was impressive, John. I saw yours was very impressive. Mm-hmm. First cake I I've mean, ever made. I, if, the, if, the, if the award was for best cake short, then I would definitely give it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> best short movie about cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The cake category. Then, then it's yours. You've got it. You've got the Oscar, John. Okay, cool. I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah, no, so that's what I was doing a bit of baking. Um, my better half has had me ripping the house apart and tiling floors and walls. So I've been doing a lot of DIY to the house, but I'm glad now because um, it's what all, this, all the things we want them to do are done. So, but yeah, so that's what I've been up to and uh, constantly on social media. <laughs> cool. well thank you all and um thanks to the fans out there for your patience obviously we're running this virtually um with different folks in different uh wi-fi settings and we popped in and out a little bit here um no it's, it's okay kyle if it makes you feel any better we, we're pretty sure that duncan might be frozen right now as well uh, <laughs> you hear very pleased <laughs> or he's yeah just super super uh stern uh and into this so we're going to try to bring um him back as well um but uh, we're breaking the internet y'all there's just too much awesomeness right now coming yeah. through zoom That's what um but let's just let's just talk that and like use that as a segue um because a lot of the fans are talking about it specifically um anissa daly uh, danley sorry who's okay. watching um she said based on your social media accounts you all seem to really love and respect one another, at least from our appearances. Uh, one of uh, her favorite things, and I know many people's favorite things about Outlander is uh, you all's like uh, relationships, you know, outside of the show. And so they're just wondering, is there something special about working on Outlander specifically that seems to spark this bond between you as uh, cast members? And that's really just a public appearance. That's really, exactly. most of us don't like each other at all. Between just on a contract. Pretend to like them. You, know, like you enjoy each other's company, you like each other, and you genuinely have good banter, it will really sell the show. Yep. So we're actually contractually obliged. Like, I have everyone tied to you, so I can tell you right now, I like him. He's all right. I don't like him. He's a dick. I like him. I like him. Good guy. Uh, obviously our tiles would be arranged differently but that's that is my general kind of opinion on the cast but the best part of that is we have no idea where the actual audience is seeing you so that could be anybody <laughs> <laughs> but the I other crazy that. thing is we don't all get to work with each other so ed for example i haven't worked with because we didn't cross over as it were right. um so kyle i Hung, hung with many times, socially and on set, and then John and Richard, um, Duncan. Towards the end, I had a scene, but it was she wasn't really a. I had a small scene in the show, but we did a one of those extra scenes for the DVD thing. So it depends on what your scenes are, is who gets to hang. Unless you're obviously like young Richard, who's in everything, so he's going to meet everybody. Um, but some of us only get to meet certain other actors. Um, and then we kind of discover each other online, actually. So Tim and I hung out a lot when we were uh, doing a convention in the States and I actually got to know Tim more at the convention than yeah, I did yeah, on big. the, because we didn't actually have any scenes together. So it's yeah. weird and it works. If that's an answer to your question. No, it totally is. I think that's an interesting thing, um, especially with a fantasy series that ex- expands uh, time travel and different locations. You know what I mean? A lot of you, yeah, don't get a chance to be in the scenes with each other. Um, but because of things like conventions and the fans, right, um, they bring you all together um, and, and through social media and through, um, you know, the convention scene. So it, it's super interesting to see. But it, I feel like it's a testament to a good show and a good cast that have been brought together when you are as friendly as you are, despite the fact that you might not have actually, you know, worked with each other. 
Anyone else? Anyone else want to sort of reflect on what you think it, it is about the casting of Outlander or the group of individuals you've worked with uh, that seems to keep you bonded um, in and out of the show? Who hasn't spoken? Was Duncan there? <laughs> Duncan's still thinking about it. He's just kind of going, what do I think about... Uh, doesn't like to be rushed. Not a man to be rushed. I can hear everyone, but... Um, ah. Oh. Can you, can you hear me? We can hear yeah, you, Duncan. Yeah, yeah. Where are you, Duncan? Where are you? Very the boy. And I'm getting you through telepathy at the moment, so... <laughs> well, I'd love to I'm say... I'm frightened. Well, I'm Duncan, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. On behalf of our regulars, who are probably quite modest, Duncan, Sam, and Kat are extremely good at welcoming all of us newbies that come in as yeah. guests. So I think they actually set the tone because they make a real point of making everybody feel comfortable. Um, and the, considering the pressure that those two are under constantly to carry this thing, they are incredibly generous and very humble. And, and I think that it sort of starts there, really, because um, that sets a tone, because we've all worked on jobs where that's not the case. Um, so you do come into a really nice world. And then, to be fair to all the, the Outlander fans, they are ridiculously nice on social media. Um, I mean, I know there was some horrible stuff about Sam recently. I don't know what that was all about. Um, but the majority of the time, they've been great. So I think that's another special thing with this job, that there's a really big Outlander family out there who, from my personal experience, it's a lot of love. Um, I hope that doesn't change after this little virtual convention. Um, but from what I've experienced, it's always been very positive, which is why I was so shocked to see that stuff about Sam. I, don't I, know think, I think also it's just, just the, the um, you know, being, being there, being on a, a big grand set and filming this amazing TV show that's got so much, I don't know, well, such a big fan base and it's been going for so long. Uh, just the thought of that, because, you know, before this, I was just a job, an actor, I get maybe a job, job or two a year. I might not get an, another job after this. I'm not even, I don't know, but it, being there, being with everybody. And it's like this as well. It's everybody here is bantering. Everyone's having a laugh. It's exactly what it's like on set. I don't think I've ever had a serious conversation with Richard Rankin without ending up in hysterics laughing. Like that. <laughs> it's all possible or even true, Kyle. I take everything seriously, including my job and everything I do on set. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that's, I think that's, that's one part of it for me, is the show itself as well. The, the people, the cast, the crew, everybody behind the scenes are all amazing, but to be in such a, a big show as well, I think that's you know, you can't you can't not be happy as an actor when you're in a show like Outlander. So I think every I think that feeds into the vibe on set as well. Yeah, yeah it felt that way, particularly in season five. Actually, we had a lot of good banter just because a lot of big ensemble scenes where we're all hanging out and a lot of the sort of malicious scenes, everything like Tim and Kyle. Fortunately, young JB wasn't there, but um, a lot, a lot, a lot of those big set pieces were just a lot of fun. But it's the people. I mean, it's the it's the people that are put together. They're all, from the cast to the crew included. Everyone just really kind of enjoys being around each other, and and, and the banter's sort of always flowing. And I think it's, all, it's the cast and the crew are made up of just really decent, humble people. Um, and I think that goes a long, long way um, in terms of just enjoying each other's company. I think. Colin, Colin uh, brought up a great point about um, you know the the standard that was set by the the early, you know the Jamie uh, the early on cast members Sam obviously Cat um, you all came in obviously um, unfortunately we lost uh, Duncan but he was he was there you know first and then um, obviously Richard uh, the next like tenured and then but then the rest of you all came in like kind of at the height of the success of the show you know in seasons three four five um, and had different lengths of stints you know i'd love to hear you know just from ed john and tim we haven't heard from from this question like what was it like coming in you know same source similar question you know uh seeing this show that it was already very successful and then coming in and adding um your amazing characters to uh that cast that cast it was quite nerve-wracking it was quite nerve-wracking i mean luckily I'd kind of had uh, little bits of Outlander kind of fed because I've known Sam for years. So I, so I had that kind of uh, influx of, oh, what's Outlander? What is it? And kind of knew about the show and saw its growth and saw its kind of um, its journey, which if I hadn't have had, I think if I'd have suddenly kind of arrived at it, I'd have gone, oh, my, oh my what is this? Because it's this juggernaut of a show kind of racing towards you. So at least I knew what I was kind of in for. And then, 
you know, you kind of can find your feet around it. But um, it was great. It was very exciting. And you know you're in for a good thing when someone comes in and says, we're going to make your clothes. You're like, really? Yeah, we're going to make your clothes. Here is some felt from the Isle of Skye. Really? And here we have got all this... All this silk brocade from France. I'm loving this. I'm loving all of this. Just dress me. And it's, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Because I think there's a number of actors that have said, it's been a great show, but the shoes were too tight. <laughs> like, oh, it's been a murder. Wonderful job. Shoes too tight. I think I was one jobs where the shoes were too tight. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Tim. Ed, John, any memorable moments kind of coming in or, or even over the past few seasons uh, that kind of stick out to you? Um, well, I was quite excited to join because uh, being like the biggest sort of Scottish thing that was happening, it was like the opportunity to play a Scot, to explore history. That was all really exciting. And then when I was going up for Young Ian and, you know, the first thing you do is you go, OK, what's this character's story? What's his arc? And you kind of see the journey that you're going to get to take this character on. And here you are at the beginning. You kind of get to sit back and you go, OK. I've got time here to really take this character on a huge uh, change um, and a huge journey, a huge arc. Yeah. So that was as an opportunity, so exciting. Um, and then I just felt like every time I kept reading more and more what was going to happen to him or what was going to happen in the story, I just kept thinking it's getting cooler and cooler and cooler. You know, I was like so excited to like, for all the Jamaica stuff and that to go out to South Africa and, and film out there. And then it was going to be in America. I'm like, we're going to get to go to America. Oh no, it's Cumbernauld. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> like America, kind of. Like one of the wilds of North Carolina, Cumbernauld. Like similarities. <laughs> we should see. Anybody from North Carolina, how'd they do? How does Cumberland uh, compare? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Ed, Ed, uh, fun memories um, from kind of getting things started and throughout the throughout the seasons. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, playing Stephen Bonnet is not not necessarily full of fun memories, but um, I um, I did feel <laughs> having having come into a, a big show halfway through before in in, in Downton Abbey, I'd sort of I'd got over the nerves or something like that. That that I remember being very nervous when I came into something uh, that that role. But this, uh, I'm similar to John. I don't want to sort of not give you something new, but I felt that it came down to character again. I think for me, it was a huge challenge. I'd never played anyone like this before. Uh, I've been up for a in that vein, but this was the first time it had sort of landed. And it was a, it was a real opportunity to, to sort of open myself up and, and try things I hadn't been able to do previously. I think that was enough to drive me forward. It coupled with everything else we've mentioned, you know, a great, a wonderful, humble crew, a cast and crew of people that know you know this story inside out um but yeah i think i didn't need to worry about the size of it so much and just and just enjoy it enjoy it enjoy it for what it was and and, and you know and, and generally enjoy the work i had a had a great time finding my way through uh playing this human if you can call him that yeah yeah Awesome. Uh, and obviously, and a bunch of you mentioned it, shout out, uh, as always, to the creatives. You know, they're working behind the scenes. And, um, you know, Tim, you touched on it. Uh, we talked about the sets and the, the design and the production design. I mean, that is like, you know, goes, uh, you know, it's 100% of the show um, that they that gets set up beforehand. So again, much love to all of them. I know they're um, thinking about season six right now, um, working, working from home, getting that ready. Um, and then you all get to bring it to life. And so, uh, again, shout out to all those amazing writers and costume designers and prop designers and set designers out there uh, that bring the show to life. You, you all mentioned a little bit about um, your characters and, and what you brought to them. Um, a lot of folks are just wondering, uh, specifically Pam R. Wagner, uh, because it does, there is some differentiations from the book and it's always going to happen when translating book to TV. And I know it's a common question that comes up, but I wonder um, the specific question, have you read any of the books? But then even more like, did you use anything from the books to, uh, to, to feed your characterizations? Is there anything that you remember happening in the books that you wish happened or vice versa that you're glad they changed? Um, anything like just in terms of your relationship with the original books and then how that translated into your performance um, in the series? I mean, I felt that the books were, I mean, I only, to be fair, I've only really read Jums of Autumn. Uh, that was, and that was because that's where Stephen Bonnet first, first pops up. And sure. I found it an incredible source to, to go back to actually. Um, because the the description of character, uh, it's, I mean, uh, you know, it's not very often. Well, that can be very often, but you know, to have this sort of you know, rich 
description sort of on to hand for you to keep going back to is, is, is for an actor. You know, sometimes you just get the script and you don't necessarily get the full picture. You know, you, you come into something and you see, well, I'm in this episode. I might be, I'm told I'm in more, but I haven't got a clue where the writing's going. With the books, at least you can actually really find a way of seeing what, what the journey is for this for this character. And and some of the physical description, particularly for, for, for my for Stephen Bonnet was 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 a great standing point. It was a great first you know uh, thing to be looking at, and, and it gave me a, a whole um, gamut of things to, to to play with, I suppose. So yeah, I used the, the books quite a lot. Was that particular book anyway? I, I've got to be honest, I, I I I struggled with the fifth. Everybody struggles with the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I read three. I went. I, I intended to ring. I intended to read one. And I read four, five, and six because Ulysses is in, is in all three. Right. But five is is the toughest one because it, it doesn't. Not a lot happens for the first five hundred pages. Really, it's a lot of scene setting, and so. But it, I found it incredibly useful because, uh, like Ed's just said, you, when you get the script and you're not quite sure sometimes where the script is going. I didn't. Ulysses never had a lot to say. He was kind of around, so you needed something to kind of tell you what was the kind of inner story. Um, so there were a lot of things in the books that that informed me on how to kind of play that character, particularly with my main relationship, was, which is with Jocasta. And the only dilemma we had was that the books made it very clear that there was a, a, a relationship between them. Uh, and we were kind of, when I asked the producers of the show, it was like, are we going into that? Are we not going into that? And they're going, oh, maybe, you know, so you as the actor then have to go, I got to sort of straddle this because I'm not quite sure are we going to get in there or not get in there. So I just took a, a line personally that he was incredibly dedicated and uh, in love with this person. But we, whether we were going to see that requited or not was something that was up to the writers. So it was sort of that, those sort of things are slightly strange. And there was I think there was in the books with Ulysses there's a big she makes a big deal about a wig that he wears, which was quite. Um, interesting because I kind of thought he should be wearing a wig and I remember saying to the producers as a status thing should I be wearing a wig and they were like um well, let's have a look at that and then they kind of went no we really love the shape of your head Colin we're not going to give you a wig and I was kind of like but it's like a big deal in the books and then of course when the show came out a lot of fans were writing in going why didn't you wear the wig like we have a choice um, so things like that sometimes are kind of frustrating because you kind of go well that's something I thought about but you're not always allowed to obviously do what you'd like to do yeah. Um, but the books were, yeah, incredibly useful. The books are a very sort of bitter, sweet resource to have. Very, very thankful for having had them. Um, they're a great foundation. They're a great sort of uh, platform on which to base your character. Much like what Ed was saying, um, when I came in, I only had one script, and that was episode 13 of season two. That's not a lot to base your character on. So I read through the first four books to get a good idea of what the anticipation, the expectation of Roger was, and also just to get a kind of idea of the flavour of the guy, see what he was about. And then if you deviate from that on the show, which you will do because they're completely different formats and it's impossible to transfer from the book straight onto screen, you can't do it. So if you deviate from that, then you just have to adjust. But the problem with that, and the reason why I say it's bittersweet, is because you do get attached to certain scenes, certain moments. Certain, certain relationships and they will either change or they'll still keep the essence of it the spirit of it they'll still tell the sort of essence of the story they just might change how they do it for logistical reasons or for storytelling reasons or whatever some of the stuff that I got really invested in when I was reading it um, was a lot of the stuff with Ed with uh, um, with uh, his character on the Gloriana on Drums of Autumn and the reason for that was really well, it really furthers his character but also you get to see a really different side of my character, but I get why there's concessions made. I mean, that journey in itself was months long. You can't put it on the screen. You have to. You have could. We've done six episodes of that. We could. We. I, I would have happily done six yeah. episodes of that. Yeah. It's a spin-off. Maybe they're saving it. Maybe they'll save a different show entirely. We go, remember all that stuff you missed from the Glory Isles? It is as a whole standalone TV show. <laughs> the life and times. The life and times on ship with... <laughs> I felt that with my character it was slightly different because he's a real life character. Right, that's a good um, point. It is slightly, slightly different. There's not that much about him in the books, but there was a lot about him historically. Yeah. Uh, but I did feel, I did feel that um, him dressing up as a woman and, and enjoying Lego might have got in the way of the character. Um, <laughs> so I left that out. I left out the fact that he enjoys women's clothes and Harry Potter Lego. <laughs> I think it was the right decision. <laughs> 
Yeah. We lost that ex- that we explains did. so much. I can see yeah. the subtlety in your performance. Now, Why? Now when you revisit and try and quickly ch- just quickly shuts a bag very quickly, you go, what's in there? I know what's in there. I know exactly what's in there. Hagrid's hut. That's what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're just, there's going to be fan fiction written tonight about your character, Tib, now. So get ready. It's going to be on the internet. Uh, the Lost oh, Wig. The Lost Wig of Ulysses. I've been writing uh, fan fiction about Governor Tryon for months. <laughs> 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 it's out there John what do you think um, uh, reflections on the book yeah I mean I, I would I, I would echo kind of what Richard said it's, it's hard to then get attached to stuff and realise oh that's not going to happen I can remember when I first read it back in for season three there were some interesting scenes with uh, with me and, uh, and Uncle Jamie and uh, I've talked about it before at panels but interesting power dynamics between the two and, and I, I, I loved them and then they didn't happen so I've always kind of separated that. <laughs> that's not going to happen or it will and great, but I'm never going to like pour my heart into it. But yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing resource, of course. The one thing that did come up this season though was, um, was his tattoos and his transformation. And I knew how important the tattoos were to Ian's change in identity. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is really important. And I'd spoken to fans before and they were like, I can't wait to see this. And then I got on to season five and they were like, mm, we're not sure about the tattoos. We're not sure if we're going to do them. And I was like, oh no, you've got <laughs> to do them. So I fought for them. And of course it was up to them. It's their decision. Whatever they wanted to do, we were going with it. But it ended up that we kind of met in the middle and we didn't go for a full design, but we went for our own design. And, and, I, I, and I really loved that. I really felt that that informed the character again. So yeah, it's a good resource, but you, yeah, you can be disappointed at times. Yeah. But they don't tell you to read them, though. So it's kind of your fault when you get hung up on certain scenes. Yeah. Moments. Like, they don't say, oh, welcome, Outlander, here's the books, read them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you think you're being a good professional. Oh, this stuff to happen. And then it doesn't, it's not their fault, it's kind of yours. So. <laughs> <laughs> good way, good way to spend it, good, Rich. I, I like it, I like it. Um, I just get in trouble later when they go, oh, my God, the shit that you guys caused on that panel. <laughs> <laughs> <Play them off. laughs> yeah, they're fine they're fine uh we haven't spoiled anything yet hey that's the biggest accomplishment you know what i mean that's that i think just that is uh, a testament to us right now kyle um any reflections back on the book uh coming in sort of obviously later uh in the books and later in the season um anything uh that you notice just character change wise um no there was a few scenes um especially the one which First of all, I was a bit like, that would be really fun to do. But then when the fans and the audience didn't see the scene, um, they started all crying out for it. We wanted to see. And the, the, the scene I'm talking about is the, the hernia operation scene. Hmm. So, I mean, that, that was, you know, I've, I was really excited. I, mean, I was thinking, like, you know, is that going to be put into the, the season? Because obviously when I joined in season four, I totally, like when Ed was saying, when he went to Downton, I totally had that. I was so scared. I was so nervous coming onto the set. And I was straight in with Kat and Sam and John. And I was just like, oh, my God, like this is, you know, a huge animal of a show. And, and I'm really nervous. But then, like we said earlier, they made me feel at home straight away. Um, but, yeah, the, 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 the hernia scene where he, where he comes into the, um, the dinner party absolutely off his head drunk and it's just like oh i've got a hernia cut it up me now get it up me now i think that would have been quite fun to play but i mean you know who knows like richard said it's impossible to transfer from page to screen so maybe it could come up in the future if i really beg and ask the the powers it be very nicely but i mean it's in the past now so kind of like i want this um interview to be because of the technical issues i've had so <laughs> okay, cool. yeah it's okay i thought you were gonna say because of how terrible a job i'm doing so and I, I really got nervous for a second there well yeah that too that that is what <laughs> i think like, some, some person messaged me and was like well he's not my john quincy myers and i was like well, well hang on a minute and they were like john quincy myers is six foot nine i was like all right well i can't really compete with that i'm sorry i'm six foot one sorry my bad wow but i do my best 
It's tough. You have to kind of like turn um, a blind ear and a blind eye to, uh, you know, the, uh, the not the fans, but like, you know, just the talk out there. You know what I mean? You have to be willing to sort of separate yourself from it, um, both the talk and then the books, like the original thing, and just really portray um, what you can and what's been written on the page. And I know there's a lot of chatter in the um, people watching everything. And and I think they're right, too. The true fans accept, you know, what, what we're bringing to them. And, and that's why the show has been so successful. So, um, again, uh, thank you all for that. There's also uh, people are now wondering after your uh, drunken comment if uh, – everyone drinks on set uh, a lot from <laughs> all, all the time all the time i've, I've rarely gone to work uh, a day yet and seen richard sober uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> collins on the vodka there so you i'm on the vodka. Like glass of vodka yeah <laughs> nothing wrong with a good drink um we're almost out of time y'all um and again i appreciate y'all for, for giving us your time um we've got about two or three minutes left so i do want to end just kind of going around where everybody give a little shout out to the fans and such um but uh, just a quick reminder to the fans, we will be giving them a 15 to 20 minute break after this, and then you'll head to your one-on-one -on -one video chats. Those are still available for purchase, so <laughs> definitely take advantage. Um, some of them are very close to selling out. Um, so within the next 15 or 20 minutes, if you'd like to purchase a one-on-one -on -one video chat with one of these amazing gentlemen, please do so. Um, also, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, autographs are available throughout the evening. So uh, definitely head to wizd.me slash virtual to check those out. Um, but yeah, I'd love uh, just to go around, You know, there's a lot of fans, uh, watching from around the world and already just loving the fact that you've been sharing uh, these stories about the set, about your personal life. Um, and so um, a question comes, uh, we talked a little bit about the amazing design work that's done. So uh, I'd love to go around and just hear a little bit if there's anything that you've ever taken from set, um, specifically, this is a question coming from uh, Ulan Man, um, or if there's just one memorable set or scen scenic piece that you wish uh, you could have or live in. And then just a, a fun shout out to the fans uh, watching at home uh, one at a time, and then we'll, we'll wrap things up. Whoever wants to take it first. And we're all thinking. Yeah. I can't think of I, well. I'll start. I can't think of anything to take away because I don't think I don't think Ulysses has a lot of prop action. Um, but the furniture at River Run is pretty gorgeous. Um, the uh, the material they use on the fabric on the sofas, I definitely like that. Um, Ulysses doesn't really get props. His prop is Jocasta. Can't take her home. Um, so <laughs> I can't really think of anything else to add to that. But in terms of a shout out to the fans, I'd just love to say that. Um, as they've kind of kept Ulysses a little bit in the background season four, and I've had a couple of nice moments season five, had a lot of lovely feedback online from a lot of fans around the world. So it's much quicker to do it here than to answer everybody's tweets. And I just love to say to everybody, thank you very much for all the love that Ulysses has got, because um, they obviously know the stories in the books. As the guys were saying earlier, you've got that book fan, TV fan, and we as the actor have to straddle with two sometimes. And there's been a lot of kind of uh, feedback of are we going to get into that relationship and I think the fact that we actually got there and kind of touched on it in a way that was satisfying for the fans and giving him a a happier no one wouldn't say ending I think the door is slightly ajar yeah. but there is a future um and so uh I, yeah been a lot of love for that and so I just want to say thank you to all the fans watching for uh giving me great feedback thank you awesome thank you Colin yeah, pro um, prop wise, uh, I managed to get what uh, managed to get from the first scene that I ever did, first scene I filmed, which was a poster of the play that Tryon and Jamie go and see, uh, and the prop guy gave me a little. As I walked past, there's a poster in a little frame, and they said, "Oh yeah, you can have the poster." We're well, keeping the frame, but you can have the poster. So I got that. But the one I would most like is I'd like my jacket, Ooh. that big red hated jacket because then i could go to any fancy dress party and people will think you've made a hell of an effort you deserve it. Yeah. simple uh simple as that really i think that's always worth worth doing and a big hat just any party it doesn't really doesn't really matter um but i just I say that you know try on is one of those characters that can split people but i've had nothing but wonderful wonderful um responses from fans from from everyone so it's been an absolute joy it really has to kind of be welcomed into this fold and uh and uh yeah to just be a part of it so thank you all thank you kindly continue it um but uh yeah no it's been it's been wonderful so thank you all i haven't taken any props i'm beginning to think i should have taken props by now maybe you should really <laughs> something or outright stolen something She's <laughs> Like happen. a horse. Just yeah. take a horse. The House of Fraser's Ridge, one of the essays, I don't know. 
I should have taken something. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Sorry, I'm back. Oh, Duncan. We finished. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Just had a complete nightmare oh. with the computer. And That's all right, Duncan. We appreciate we appreciate you for coming back in. We're just we're actually wrapping things up, so no offense, but uh, <laughs> um, well, we are. We're going to give everyone. Um, we're giving everyone just a final kind of shout out. Fans are wanting if if there's any props or or costume pieces that you particularly admired that you wish you took or you did take, and then just kind of a final shout out to the fans from everybody. Yeah, so I'll just say thank you for all your support in season five. Um, you know, we've been blown away by the response. Everyone seems to be really loving it. Yeah. Um, for your support of the show thus far, it's very much appreciated. We genuinely appreciate all of your kind of positive energy. Why did I say that? But I mean it. Um, so, yeah, and continue to do so. Much love from here in fake Sydney. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Um, I actually, um, I got given some cool props this season. Um, I don't know if I can even say what they are. Handcuffs from me are not props, John Bell. (laughs) (laughs) No, they're not worth it. Can you tell us about any of them? Um, well, I got given my tomahawk. So when I get back, I have my own tomahawk now. Uh, the lovely guys in the armory departments uh, came up to me at the end and were like, look, we have these rubber versions of them, so you're not going to go out and hurt anybody. You know, I am from Glasgow, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I got to keep that. I've got another weapon, but I'm not going to say what it is. Ooh. I'll have to tune into the finale. To see that. <laughs> Can I just oh. say... <laughs> that, God, that, okay, yeah, like just clicking how that sounded. John, I just have to say... <laughs> I'm loving the look, the Indian look, by the way. Right, and that's and if that, oh yeah, and if that was anything that I wish I could take, and yeah. trust me, I asked. Such a cool look. To, It would be to take that wig, because yeah. uh, cool I would wear that in my real life. That was um, a wig. That was a wig. You saw my bald head. You rubbed it plenty of times. Come on, we we are we are descending into something else. Before the water. It's a cool look. It's a very cool. Look. <laughs> um but yeah apart from all of that nonsense there thank you so much guys it's been amazing to see um and yeah feeling the love from all parts of the world um so yeah thank you so much thank you weapons and wigs the untold uh outlander (laughs) side story right yeah and if it's if it's costumes in there too i have to take the mustard coat that i wore in Season. Come on, Colin, you had your turn. I have to finish, take man. the mustard coat. <laughs> come on, come on, Colin. Over to Kyle. Over to Kyle. Come on, no, Kyle. Come on, they've been struggling with internet. Let's give Kyle <laughs> some time. Come no, on, no, I'm last. I'm last. Ed, Ed's next. We're doing it in order, aren't we? Uh, I I mean, I, I, no, I didn't keep anything. Um, I don't. I don't. I, the only thing I would have really, really, really loved to have kept, or I really, I think. I got a lot of value from was this year's costumes. I, I liked that there was a a different um, approach in terms of where Bonnet was at. He suddenly became this, well, he was trying to become this gentleman figure. And I felt that the costumes really, uh, well, they really helped me in, in, in trying to find that. So yeah, I'm a big, big fan of what Trish uh, did this year for that. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of saying, oh, go away phone. Um, so thank you to everybody. Uh, I'd like to actually say a massive thank you to those of you who've been supporting the uh, recent running. Um, and some, some of you have supported with donations, but also just sort of the moral, moral support, morale uh, has been uh, splendid uh, and wonderful to, to receive. Um, yeah, I mean, there's been some lovely, lovely things about the work as well. But yeah, the, the running you know, at this time has been a, it's been a real joy to see people get behind that. So thank you. Thanks. I take it. I've actually have a, a specific spin question um, for Duncan from a fan uh, that won a little contest we did. So let's, Kyle, let's, uh, oh, D- Duncan, you've got something right there. Yeah, this is the only thing after six years that Outlander gave me. It's uh, the world famous Granny's Muff, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> more my skin. There's oh. the Granny that I uh, took it off. No. Oh, I missed that. I missed that. It is in place. Um, that was worth the wait of you going and coming back, I think. Oh. <laughs> it's been worth the seven years of effort. Though, I think. <laughs> and Duncan, quick question, quick additional question from Coco. We had a contest winner that wanted to ask a specific question to you. If you could time travel, if your character could time travel, 
who would you bring along as companion? Who would be your oh, companion? Um, oh, some interesting. Probably Graham McTavish. He's always good for a laugh. And yeah. we <laughs> happened to go back, and it was like wild dinosaurs. I could just feed that, but you know, feed him to them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug. That's from Coco Pipkin. All right, Kyle, you got it. Bring us home. <laughs> oh, Come on, Kyle. I Wheels. I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> no, um, there's uh, when we when we did the see, the Battle of Alamance, uh, we all got we all got given the cockades for our costumes to make sure that the the, um, the red coats didn't mistake us for the um, the other guys. So um, uh, I, I started calling them because it, it, it resembled a Welsh daffodil and I'm very patriotic um, as all the no, other you? members. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, that, yeah, that, <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to get... I've been uh, in the corner a moment ago, you see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ed, the first time that we started the job, we got in the car together from the airport and I thought you were Irish because you were doing the accent. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was. <laughs> that was my first day on Outlander. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, and I'd like to keep the knife, the Indian knife, 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 knife sheath that uh, John Quincy might as well, because I think that's pretty cool. Um, and just in regards to saying thank you, um, I, I do want to thank all the boys here as well and everyone in the cast, because I feel very, very, very lucky to be a part of this show. Um, I know... Um, I can be boisterous and loud, and I'm not a very intelligent person, but I am really, I suppose. But uh, thank you all for putting up with me. And to the fans, yeah, it is It is very nice. It's very nice to be told you're brilliant a um, hundred times a day on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> um, so, you know, especially when you when you think you are you really aren't brilliant. So thank you very much for all the support since, since I've joined. And, um, yeah, uh, I love you all equally. Oh. Wales. Thank you, Kyle. And I know I speak for all the fans when I say, pick a winner for the Bake Off contest, Kyle. We've been waiting on Twitter. for the <laughs> No, thank you all, gentlemen. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, uh, to all those folks watching at home, uh, first responders, essential workers, those that are just stuck in their homes uh, with their families, uh, we know that we appreciate all of you prov for, for providing us an excellent and amazing uh, season five. We're excited for the finale. We can't wait what happens uh, in season six. And we thank you for giving us a, a nice 45 minute break from everything. So again, uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you to the fans watching out there. One more big virtual round of applause. Show us your like, show us your hearts, show us your applause emojis uh, for Colin McFarlane, Duncan LaCroix, Ed Spilliers, John Bell, Richard Rankin, Tim Downey, and Kyle Reese, everybody, the cast. Thank you all, gentlemen. Thank you. We be back soon, sir. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.